Hello my fellow Going Medieval fans and welcome to this third player construction showcase. My name is Peter and I have received several save files from your fellow players since the previous episode was posted, so I have prepared one of them for this settlement overview. The others I will show off to you in the next episodes. If you want me to showcase your village or structure, send me the screenshots or even better the save file at the email address in the description where you will also find the link to the previous showcase episodes and my guides about this game. First let's take a look at Hanstead by Lavaropas. This limestone settlement takes up center stage on the whole of the map. Its massive curtain wall, both thick and tall, as well as beautifully decorated by banners, braziers and battlements, encompasses not only the main castle, but also several other unique structures. To enter these vast castle grounds, one must pass through a number of traps and several sets of doors, above which are not just battlements, but also two tall defensive towers. This player has created roads, which lead spawning raiders directly to these doors and the traps outside them. He has done this on several other raid spawn points and all those roads lead to similar defenses. The red banners with skulls make for terrifying entrances on their own even if we disregard the rest of the defensive designs. There are in total three such entrances all designed in the same way. This is a feature which immediately sets the settlement apart as having multiple main entrances is not how most players build their castles and vault settlements. Beyond this entrance we can see settlers in full steel armor no less as they are farming crops behind which there is a large tree grove. Interestingly enough, the grounds of the castle here have few roads and are not very neat or detailed when compared to the rest of the construction. A lot more crops are placed next to low buildings whose interior we will take a look at in a moment but we can already see a lot through the many windows. The workstations here are for sewing and the shelves are for storing clothing materials. Next to these are armor racks which serve as storage for newly created superior winter and summer clothing. Other rooms in this building have their own specialized uses, like the apothecary room here, the library next to it, containing all the research tables and a number of bookshelves. These are also placed upstairs where we find many game tables. The tower, which is beautifully designed, tops off this building whose many windows let us peer inside and give the whole place a more lived-in appearance. On a raised level next to this building, we find a whole field of steel ingots and the furnaces responsible for smelting these. But this is totally generic stuff compared to the grand, even royal pyres built on top of this platform. It is all highly ornamented and the combo of clay and limestone bricks adds a great final touch. Beneath all of this we find large specialized rooms for blacksmithing and armor smithing with multiple workstations all near the large steel stockpile outside. More rooms are set up as woodworking stations for wooden melee and range weapons. One level below all of this are the church and temple, which is a great design choice to keep everything close by and prevent settlers from losing time traveling to places for leisure time. On this level we also find the workstation for crafting limestone bricks, a dining room, kitchen, brewery and the workstation for food drying and alcohol distilling. Directly below are the food basements, separated into individual rooms and filled with shelves which are in turn filled with raw and cooked food. But what is hidden behind this set of double doors? It is a medieval version of a bank vault. Its design doesn't look completely finished as some doors are obviously missing, but it holds a fortune of this precious metal. Now we should zoom out and go back to the surface to find out what the rest of the settlement has to offer. This is the main building and it was constructed as a tall, highly fortified, our rich four-sided castle. Its roof is highly decorated and features a neatly designed center structure which has a beautiful nighttime glow thanks to all of its braziers. It is always interesting to spot little things like these two holes in the roof which are obviously due to a stability issue, be it caused by a player mistake or the well-known stability bug. The more random looking window placement makes these walls and towers especially interesting as they break up the more common theme of mathematical precision we saw in other players' constructions in previous episodes. 
The top room holds double cartography tables and not much else. The room beneath looks to be set aside for storage, but nothing is being stored here at the moment. The next few levels are exclusively set aside for settlers' rooms. These are big and hold a lot more than we are used to seeing. Besides the bed, we have the weapon and armor racks, chests, braziers and even a stone stool. There are direct connections to the towers and walls from these rooms, allowing settlers quick access to the defenses in case of a surprise night attack. Each lower level holds fewer number of these rooms and this one even has a huge room dedicated to medicine, with double apothecary workbenches and a distilling station. Below is a level completely dedicated to settlers leisure activities. First a huge room with game tables and another two rooms filled with shrines of both religions. This village is a home to over 20 settlers, but this many shrines is more of a show of wealth and power than necessity. Under the temple and church we finally locate the great hall and the main kitchen of the settlement. Packaged meals on shelves in the great hall are always a good idea to keep the food as close to where it is eaten as possible. Meals would go bad due to heat, but these packaged meals won't. Going another level down, we find a storeroom full of steel, enough to craft weapons and armor for a whole nation. Further down, we can see another food basement with a surprising number of dead wolves. On that note, if you didn't notice, the kitchen also had a number of dead deers in it. Below the steel storeroom and across from the food basement, we find another large brewery with a huge stockpile of barley. You would think this is as far down as the basement goes, but you would be wrong. This is where another gold vault is located and more steel ingots. This room is not as vast as the one we saw before, but there is even more room set aside below this level. For gold or steel, we can't tell right now. I cannot even express how much I enjoy taking a peek at highly detailed and unique looking settlements and castles like this one. Your ingenuity and imaginative designs inspire me to try and come up with more unique designs in my own playthroughs and I hope that everyone watching these videos will have a similar experience. And if you have been enjoying this one, please don't mind me reminding you to hit that like button, comment about which is your favorite feature of this settlement and subscribe if you haven't already to see more videos like this one. As promised in the previous episode, here is the White City by Monkey3y42 from Reddit. Its heavily fortified and defended entrance has double layered wooden and limestone walls, protruding towers for archers and a narrow causeway filled with traps, so in essence a nightmare to assault. Best of all, there is an actual ditch and a huge barbican with terraces for archers. For those who don't know, a barbican is what you call a tower structure which has an entrance gate. I think a thousand raiders would not get through this alive. The main keep is no less imposing. Here we again have the mathematical precision in window placement, but the many levels of the structure have a lot of different parts, each looking a bit different than the other. I especially like the multiple sky bridges between these separate parts. Interestingly enough, there is only a single proper tower at the back of this gigantic keep, seen better in this shot. The bailey is also more obvious in this screenshot. This is the wide open space behind the main gates but in front of the keep. More traps are obvious here with torches and braziers to make it all look cool. This is the back of the structure and down there on the right and left you can just make out two back doors. To save you the trouble of counting, the tallest parts of the keep are exactly 10 levels tall. Here in the back of it we can also see tree groves, crop farming and even a single stone casket. What an odd placement for it. You will agree it is quite the unique design overall with a shape which isn't exactly medieval but neither completely reminiscent of later periods. I'm just sorry we don't have any shots of the inside. I will try to find them for the next episodes. Now to give you a strong contrast to this massive above ground build, let's look at this underground one by Monta Gna Grasso from Reddit. It's quite expensive, single layered and was still in construction when these screenshots were taken. Here is a closer look at some of the rooms. These at the top are actual underground greenhouses, something I have shown you how to build in one of my guides, link up here and below. Next to it are many brewing stations and below we have the kitchen and food storage. 
An oddity here is that the cooking fire is right in the food basement with raw and cooked meals. This isn't the optimal placement because of the heat released by cooking, which warms up the room, making food spoil faster. To the left of all of this is a massive but not filled out great hall directly next to quite roomy single bedrooms which again are not used for much other than a bed and a brazier. We can see more evidence that everything is still in construction so I guess that is the reason. To the right of the underground greenhouses we find a room for trash, temple and catacombs for the deceased, half of which are still under construction. The hallway design isn't what I would use because it appears to waste a lot of space and also travel time. A very interesting feature of this underground village is a tree grove open to the outside in one of the depressions. Next, I want to show you a settlement constructed with a really cool mix of wood and limestone. It isn't huge or anything, but it has a rather interesting design. It's most notable for the low but thick wooden palisade which is partially made up from back walls of several structures. Its zigzag pattern makes it much better looking than a straight four-sided settlement would look like, but it's harder to defend. The entrance is protected by traps, reinforced doors, towers and battlements, forming a proper barbican. As I mentioned, this combo of wooden pillars with limestone walls and roofs is not something I have seen before. It makes for a unique visual appearance and it's one of the main reasons I have chosen to showcase the settlement. I am sorry for no indoor shots, I did not find any. But the outside is interesting on its own. Just look at the design of this tower here to the right. The small details like raw limestone marilands and limestone brick roof tiles give it almost a Lego look. We can notice that all the farming is done inside the walls up here and over to the right behind the entrance. This isn't the case with the next super-sized version of this design as here farming is done outside the settlement. It is called Castle Priory. Luckily for us this player made more than a few close-up screenshots, some of which are of the inside. These reveal beautifully designed and detailed rooms and halls. The double level open great hall is just one of these. The addition of armor racks in this room looks like an attempt to add the feel of those suits of armors which stand empty as decorations. Outside, a really cool detail are actual sparring grounds complete with separate seats for the nobility and lower classes. The rest of the grounds are no less decorated, showing a real flair for designing by the player who made the settlement. He has combined trees, fences, road tiles and even workbenches to make this look almost like film scenography. And after taking a look at these two screenshots with different weather, I think you will agree with me especially because of the nighttime shot with all the burning torches on the outside. Depending on how you look at it and what are your definitions of beauty, this settlement is one of the best ones to me. This last castle I didn't have many good shots of, but it is also one worth showing off. It is filled with cool details and a well-designed main keep. If we peer into the windows of the tallest part of the main keep, we can actually spot trees growing inside. Its grounds are huge but not very detailed or used for anything special. I do love the mix of limestone walls and clay tiled roofs because of how they look like in the rain and interestingly enough the walls are topped that way too. There are battlements but only on the corner tower. There is actually more to this settlement but it hasn't all been captured on these screenshots. So it is definitely another one I want to revisit with a video overview, especially to check out those trees growing inside. And with that, we come to the end of the settlement showcase. To get your own settlement or structure featured, send me screenshots or save files to the email in the description. Because I enjoy making these as much as you enjoy watching them, I will post new episodes soon. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!